Hi guys, and welcome to another kit video. So I finally installed an engine bay speaker into my kit and I've wired it up to the sound mixer which itself is wired up to the radio and also to the scanner control box. So in this video I'm going to talk you through the whole installation process. Just in case you wonder what radio this is, this is the RetroSound Newport radio which uh, looks old school but is modern technology behind it all. It has two USB ports, one in the front and one here in the back with this cable. It also has two auxiliary inputs, inputs here, one in the front and another one here in the back which I'm not using currently so the cable is not sticking out. It has Bluetooth, it has a microphone which I can, when I connect it with Bluetooth to my phone, I can actually take a phone call while driving safely. And uh, since I removed the metal retractable antenna I installed a uh, matching retro sound uh, like a windshield antenna which I actually glued here well I, I stuck it onto the A pillar because it just looks nicer than having it on the windscreen I tried that option too but the uh, radio channel reception uh, is not better like it doesn't change whether I have it on the screen or on the, on the glass or on the A pillar it's the, the quality is not the best but since I'm not listening to a lot of radio while driving kit it's okay like I mostly have music on the USB or I just listen to that lovely V8. I have also changed all the four speakers, the 4x6 and 6x9 speakers, well, the 4x6 in the front and 6x9 in the rear. Uh, those are Alpine speakers. I'll leave uh, details in the description down below in the video. I haven't changed the radio cables by the way. The ones that were in the car were actually mint so I just swapped out the speakers. And just one more detail about the radio. I actually had to buy an uh, adapter radio harness, uh, like a GM harness to adapt to this radio because it has the standard uh, DIN connectors in the back. So you need to buy a GM radio harness adapter so you can actually connect it to that adapter and then solder the cables to the standard harness that comes with the radio. But it's very easy because everything is labeled on that harness and you just have to connect the right cables to each other and solder them and uh, heat shrink them and then you're good to go. Now let's talk about the engine bay speaker. The funny thing about my engine bay speaker is that if you look into the engine bay you can't find any speaker. The reason being is that I've installed it just below the battery, basically below the battery tray here on the passenger side. There are plenty, well different, several uh, holes already in the battery tray for different reasons. Some cars, depending on what engine you have, have the uh, battery on the driver's side, some have it on the passenger side and have the charcoal canister here or other things depending on what engine and what configuration you had. So it was quite easy actually to install the speaker just underneath there given the fact also that the speaker I I'm using is a 100 watt marine speaker which comes with a frame already around it so you can attach it. And I didn't even have to lift the car or anything, I could just crawl underneath here and I removed the air dam so I can access just below that battery tray and install the speaker. Now that the cover is gone, I can finally access underneath to insert speakers just underneath the battery tray. A little bit, little bit of surface rust still here. See? The bracket holes up here. It's a perfect spot with a couple of washers. Then the speaker, let me try and zoom out. And then I brought the cable up through one of the holes. Here, there's the speaker cable, and I'm gonna insert the, the same through the same channels. The uh, the scanner cables go through into the inside through the antenna hole, and then I'll have it inside and can control it through the sound mixer.
Now inside on the passenger side is where the magic continues. The I got all the cables through the antenna hole here just the way I did it for the scanner control box and get the speaker cable through here. And then underneath the seat is the sound box, the sound, not the sound box, the sound mixer, where I have everything connected. So basically uh, the cables, RCA cables, go in from the scanner control box into the sound mixer. And then also RCA cables from the radio, which are in the back here, into this sound mixer. As you can see, I removed the passenger seat. So I could widen the opening of the mounting point, the top left mounting point of the seat to guide the cable through underneath the carpet and through there and then connect it directly to the sound mixer. To get the cables through the opening of the carpet, I used a guide cable, basically a thick metal cable just as I did for the uh, cables that went through the radio harness opening. I guided that through, attached the cable to the RCA cables or the and the speaker cables and then pulled it back so I could uh, guide them through and attach all the cables to the sound mixer. Especially in my case where I ha on the, the carpet I have the mass backing on the carpet which is a very thick padding so it really helps to use the thick guide cable to get the speaker cables and the other RCA cables and uh, electricity power cables through there. Now let's see what we got. The mixer is installed here. All the cables are underneath the carpet. We have here the power cable which goes underneath the carpet over here and then here I still have to wire that up. Then uh, this is for this is goes to the outside speaker through here behind that carpet in that uh, plug hole that leads over to the uh, into the engine bay. Then the uh, this is the scanner module scanner box in here with the ground loop isolator. If you wonder what this is, this is a ground loop isolator because the scanner when it's actually on with the scanner sound and all the clips that are on there. Uh, sound there's a little bit of a cl clicking noise going on there as it is right now without this uh, ground loop in, uh, isolator so I'm hoping that this uh, ground loop isolator will actually cancel all the clicking noises and the, the sound coming from the scanner control box will be crystal clear and it's hanging up there and it goes up here into the box right here Then the two speakers inputs from the it's actually front front and rear as far as the radio is concerned but since this is just going into one uh, since this is just going into one speaker it doesn't matter but it's all in here I can just we'll keep them at the same level now if you just saw the installation process I wired it up a bit differently than I have now because I have learned from my mistakes I realized that the only two ports that, but because this is connected also to electricity, basically to uh, ignition 12 volt, the channel one and two are amplified. So this is why I have the scanner coming in here, input, scanner input on channel one. Then I have the radio on channel two. Basically I have two cables here, two harnesses for the uh, radio, but this is front and this one is rear, but because only channel one and two are amplified, whatever comes into channel three directly, even if I crank up, crank up the volume fully, I don't hear much. And it's also not that necessary because it's all going into just one speaker. So the front or the rear, basically the front is sufficient to, to catch all the songs or catch all the, basically all the content from the radio. 
and then here I got the headphones line out to connect this is a microphone oh yeah adapter which goes into RCA and from RCA I clip in here into the speaker cable which I kind of extended here a little bit because it wasn't long enough and that's doing the job basically once I switch on the ignition this slides up and there's electricity on it and then I can actually hear anything I play either on the radio or the scanner I'm free to play with the volume controls here for the radio here in the middle and the scanner on the uh, outer left side so what I did to give power to the sound mixer is to take up the radio and connect the power 12 volt to the ignition 12 volt from the radio. Connect it there, uh, heat, heat shrink it to the same cable, as well as the antenna. I previously had it on a different cable which was wrong, so I connected these two together and then I took the ground from the same place I took ground for the scanner here on the in the ashtray. For the cigarette lighter. Of course I had to take off this cover here on top but I've already done a video on how to take everything apart in the interior so I leave the link to this video in the description of this video. So I finally managed to wire everything together. The ground is here. I actually had to switch over the wire. The white stripes is actually the one that is ground. And the other one is power, 12 volt. I connected it together with the uh, power wire of this antenna to this yellow one. Yellow one is 12 volt with ignition. The second from the bottom right. And I connected it and I put some heat shrink over it. Now it's all connected. I've tested it, it works, but even with the sound mixer on full volume, the outside speaker is still quite, well, still quite low, still quite uh, quiet. So we're gonna have to figure out what that's all about. Now here comes the funny thing. In the scanner control box I got from KRW, you have two SD cards, at least the ones I have. I have the one from 2018, I guess, and by now there's a, like the one they sell now is newer. But uh, it has an SD card as well. But I'm not sure if it has, if it uses two SD cards or just, or just one. Mine has two: one for the scanner sounds, and one for the turbine sounds and additional sounds MP3 files that you want to add. Because when you buy it, you get a couple of sentences of kit in Italian. Of course, you can leave them. Or you can do with them whatever you want. You can add different, different uh, MP3 files, and just you just need to name it, name them accordingly, so that the system can uh, read them. But KRW has manuals uh, online for free and in PDF you can just go into the download section and get the respective manual once you have the scanner. Long story short, I just had to open up the scanner control box because uh, in this one, in this older one I have, you have to open it up. You can't just access it from outside. So I had to open it up and I actually made some opening now onto the plastic uh, cover so I could access those SD cards without having to open the actual control box. So I put some sentences on. And I have yet to figure out a few things, like most of it works, but let's let's show you how it works now and what I still have to figure out. One last important thing to mention about this uh, scanner control box is that when you open it, you can also adjust the volume of each channel. You have here above the SD cards on the left, you have a scanner uh, volume switch, which you can drive up or down with a little screwdriver. Same thing for the turbine sound and other MP3s you, you load on the SD card where it says FX and on top you have the auxiliary main volume switch so I cranked everything up to the full max so that I would get the best experience while switching it on and listening to it. Alright, since the sound mixer is connected to ignition 12 volt I have to have the ignition on if I want the outside speaker to work. So the ignition is on, now I'm switching on the scanner. Let's go outside. You can hear kids scanner sound, which you can deactivate by pressing one of the buttons and reactivate. 
you hold them. Press B once. Switch on the turbine. So the turbine just runs. Press it again, once shortly, to switch it off. And then you have this button D here for the uh, sentences that I've put on. Like you can put 10 sentences or 10 files on it and then just uh, press once for the first sentence, press three times for the third sentence and so on. Let's press three times. Press once. And this is basically where you can hear, well, the problem I still have the issue is that it's too quiet. It's fine if the engine is not running, if you're standing next to it, but if you wanted really to have it much louder, uh, it's uh, really all there is. Now the sound box is really on its max here for the scanner. And I'm a little bit disappointed because the sound box, uh, with the sound mixer, excuse me, is uh, already amplified and it's 100 watts speaker and I've reached out to customer service and they say that it needs another amplifier so I have to look into that that's not exactly what I had in mind I might just leave it like this because it's not like I'm going to be on shows all the time with this car and the last little option that I've already showed in the scanner video is with the button C you can switch the different modes of the scanner lighting setup there you have it guys it's not a big technical challenge to do in install of that I mean, it's a bit fiddly, of course, getting under the car, installing the cable wire through the, the firewall or wherever you want to get it through and then under the carpet. If you're doing redoing the entire interior and uh, know exactly how you want to wire it, if you, even whatever else you want to install in the car, of course, it's better to do so before you install the carpet. Lay the foundations properly first, but uh, in this case, it wasn't that big of a channel challenge just to get the cables from the radio to the sound mixer under the passenger car, a uh, passenger seat. I just took the passenger seat out for a minute and uh, I just think it's quite neat like this because I like the way to have all of these, well, these several installations but not being able to see them, actually hide them and not really have them in my way. The only thing that you can see is basically the uh, scanner uh, surveillance mode uh, speed regulator which is actually quite neat because that's also something that you could see in Kit when he was switched onto into surveillance mode. Anyhow guys, thank you very much for watching. Rem remember to like and subscribe and maybe to share and see you next time.